Welcome back. You're watching uh, the Urban Debate on Mirror Now. After the nuns who were supporting the rape survivor nun refused to leave Kuria Vilangadu, they're following their transfer orders that they received not once but twice. The mother general of that organization has now written a fresh letter to one sister, Sister Nina Rose, asking her to immediately present herself in front of the mother general in Jalandhar. Now remember, the rape accused Franco Mulakal is based in Jalandhar. And the letter states that if Sister Nina Rose fails to present herself, she will face strict action. And this just seems like another attempt to simply break the circle of support around the victim in Kerala and to somehow, by hook or by crook, get these nuns out of that city. Joining me on the show right now, Sheba Kurian, Deputy News Editor for News Minute from Bangalore, who's been tracking the story. And Sandhya Raju George is an advocate of the Kerala High Court who has been supporting the nuns. Sheba Kurian, uh, my first question is to you. What update can you give us right now of what's going on in Kerala and the reaction to uh, this fresh letter that has been issued to one of these nuns? Uh, so, uh, Faith, there, there, there seems to be no end to the, uh, to, to the kind of uh, mental harassment uh, these nuns are, subject, are being subjected to. Uh, so, the, the latest proof is this letter to, to Sister Nina Rose. And uh, this letter is, is a little different from the ones that were issued to uh, the, the, the four nuns uh, who supported uh, the, the survivor nun and protested against the, uh, the, the rape accused Bishop Franco. Now, the, the, the letters to the, the four nuns uh, were, uh, were, were critical in, in the sense that they were asked, uh, they were asked, uh, they were asked to uh, take up their, their transfer orders and return to their respective congregation that they were assigned. Now, but, but the letter that was issued to his sister Nina was, was, uh, was riddled with accusations mm. without any substantiation. Like, there, there are no substantial evidence that, that she actually committed any crime. Uh, so she has been asked, uh, as you said, she has been asked to present herself to the Superior General on January 26th for violating, for, for violating the congregational laws. Now, uh, I, what I don't understand is uh, they have, they, they've just thrown, thrown around a lot of phrases saying uh, you, have, you, ha you, have you have been carrying out a rebellious, uh, rebellious posture, you have, been, uh, you, you, have not, you have been refusing to mend your way of life. You have been refusing to, uh, to to fall in line. So these are the these are the terms that have been used in the letter without giving giving out any reasons or any any evidence or one incident where she has violated any any norms or, or any canonical norms. So I really don't know what what exactly she will present. Uh, to the uh, yes. uh, to the mother superior, we have been trying to get in touch with the uh, with one of the sisters, but the none of the calls have been going. Probably they might be they might be they might be in fear that what will happen? Who is calling us? What is the next threat that uh, the church is going to issue? Yeah. Right. In, in fact, I just want to uh, read out some portions of this very very hostile letter that has been issued to Sister Nina Rose. It says. Uh, you've not been cooperating with the new superior of the community. Subsequently, during an official visit, the superior along with the assistant general, you were counseled to shed your hostile attitude and to live in unity. However, you continued to pay scant heed to your counseling. It goes on to say, it is highly regretted that you are carrying on this rebellious posture and refusing to be part of the community, despite repeated reminders of your superiors instructing you to mend your present way of life. You've refused to fall in line, thereby raising a serious question mark on your own commitment to follow the vow of obedience and, dis uh, and discipline. He also goes on to say, let me also warn you that failure on your part to comply with the above advice and to report in person to the superior general will be const uh, construed as a deliberate refusal to abide by an order and thereby we can take action against you as approved canonically. And this is a bold-faced threat. So basically, it just says that if you do not present yourself as instructed, effectively, we will remove you from the convent. Uh, Sandhya Raju George, advocate with the Kerala High Court. Sandhya George, these uh, nuns have already written to the Chief Minister of Kerala asking for some sort of asylum from within the government so that they have a place to stay. Because obviously, from this letter, the threat now has been escalated to removal from the order entirely.
Has there been any response exactly. from the government, Sandhya? At, at this point of time, nothing much. But the thing is, the, the government cannot uh, close its uh, eyes or ears to this. Because this is a clear form of, you know, trying to, uh, as you said earlier, isolate the nun and uh, send them to separate places so that, uh, you know, it, and it's a form of intimidation. Uh, they are actually planning something legal. They will, they are waiting for the chief minister's response. And based on that, they will definitely move uh, for, uh, move uh, towards a legal step. If you've managed to have a word with them, uh, Sandhya, does this, does this letter actually amount to a threat of removal from the order? Is that what this means when the mother general says, we'll be left with no option but to go ahead with further canonically approved punitive proceedings against you? What does that mean? Yeah, no, the, definitely, this is a threat. This is a threat. This is a threat of intimidation, definitely. Uh, because, see, these sisters, uh, these nuns here, definitely want to be attached to the convent. They don't want to leave their uh, vocation which they had chosen. Now, the thing is, the kind of ultimatum which is being given to them is either you leave this place, I mean, you better leave this, we don't want you here. Because there was an instance when uh, the sisters had asked, the nuns had asked for extra protection, the nun said, uh, the mother superior of that uh, convent said that we cannot give you protection here. You better go to some Mahila Mandiram or uh, some other place. The government will have to do, but we cannot give you the protection here. And we don't have the money to give, uh, to, you know, take those extra steps. So that is the kind of uh, approach the, you know, the, uh, the, the mother superior of that particular convent is taking. So they want uh, by any way, by hook or crook, by silent threats of intimidation, remove them from this particular convent. That is their entire uh, plan. And uh, in the recent, I mean, like, I would like to just say that from Father, uh, Sister Lucy, Father Augustine, and now final, these sisters, it's all like a planned way of intimidation so that uh, they um, kind of, you know, confirm. Because definitely they know that they will not confirm. So then this is used as a, this will be used as a disciplinary action against them. All right. Oh, we're going to leave it there for now because we'll keep coming back to the story as and when there's an update. Uh, Sandhya Raju and Shiba Kurian, many thanks for joining us here on uh, Mirror Now. We appeal to the Kerala government to pay heed to the needs of uh, these sisters and give them a safe place to live until after this uh, case is in fact heard because this is obviously a case of witness and victim intimidation. To the Catholic Church, you have to do better than this. It is beyond a shadow of doubt now that the church has taken a choice and it has chosen to stand with the accused bishop and not with the nuns that are currently in their care. The church really needs to put up a more responsible form of reaction to this story. And so far, all of the evidence, all of the reactions, all of the statements that have come from the church have been nothing but patriarchal and anti-women and anti-nun and anti-victim. It is very disappointing.